There is an old Chinese proverb that states, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Well, that's how many Chinese immigrants left their homeland in search of economic opportunities. In the late 1800s, there was an influx of Chinese immigration to Canada's West. Chinese immigrants immigrated for many reasons, working on farms, opening up stores, and participating in logging operations in British Columbia and elsewhere. Many came to help build the Canadian Pacific Railway, the first Canadian railway to cross the Rocky Mountains and reach the Pacific Coast. In 1923, the Canadian government passed a new Chinese Immigration Act, which came to be known as the Chinese Exclusion Act. Under the new act, Chinese immigration to Canada was completely banned. This legislation was kept in place until 1947, and its effects on Canada's Chinese community was devastating. Because of the costly head tax, by 1923, Canada's Chinese communities were largely bachelor societies, where men outnumbered women by a ratio of almost 28 to 1. Many Chinese men had to come to Canada alone, hoping to save enough money to bring over their wives and families. The Chinese Exclusion Act of 1923 destroyed those dreams. Yoon spent many years living alone in Canada. Even after 1947, immigration to Canada was still challenging. Until Canada's immigration system was overhauled in 1967, few Chinese were let into the country, and usually only for those families' reunification purposes. To commemorate the centennial of this discriminatory act, students at Baroque Secondary School enrolled in the arts were asked to create artwork depicting the challenges, adversities, and the resiliency of our Chinese immigrants. Immigration has affected my life in like this one really big way that I can think of. So um, a bit before I was born, my parents immigrated from China to here in Canada for like the opportunities, quality of life, et cetera, et cetera. So that has led me to living a good life in Canada, first of all, but uh, I've grown close to Canadian culture as well. But at the same time, I'm distanced from my native Chinese culture. So example of this would be like uh, conver conversing with my relatives over the phone, FaceTime or anything. Uh, I can't really talk to them that well because I'm so distanced from Mandarin, the Chinese language, right? Uh, or one of the Chinese languages. And I'm distanced from the customs. It seems so foreign to me. Uh, and that's one thing that I noticed. My family immigrated to Canada before I was born. So even though I don't have any personal experiences, learning about the history of Chinese immigration in Canada and being able to connect back to my family stories is an important experience for me. Most complicated thing for mine personally was trying to find a symbol that was more different than everybody else's. Because in Resilience, everyone started to choose like the dragon and I didn't kind of want to choose that one because that felt too like too basic. So uh, in the end, I did try finding like different animals, like uh, like an eagle, a hawk, to a phoenix. In the end, I chose a wolf because it showed the exact same sort of theme that it was going for. I like resilience. It's brave. It's independent. It's kind of like how like the Chinese people did. So during the beginning stages of making this project, I knew I wanted to incorporate some sort of animals, either from the Chinese zodiac because they hold great significance to Chinese culture or another animal that holds great impact on Chinese culture and is related somehow. Um, during this planning process, I was struggling through deciding the composition, um, what I wanted to include because there were so many different things I thought would fit into the theme. In other words, it took me a while to narrow down what symbols I wanted to include and what I did not want to include. So for my piece, I decided to center it around the flower Dicentra. These are flowers that appear to like be in the shape of hearts, and then they have petals peeling off of them. Um, they're also nicknamed bleeding hearts because of this. 
and they're herbaceous perennial plants, meaning that they um, survive throughout the entire year. Though during winter, their plants above ground may die down, their roots still survive. In my artwork, I use the phoenix, and the phoenix is a mythical creature that dies within flames and then is reborn from the same ashes of fire that it initially burned in. And I felt that this displayed resilience because rather than burning to death, it gathers enough strength to begin a new life. Also, I incorporated lotuses throughout my artwork because these lotuses, they grow in these muddy environments, but then they emerge with these elegant petals. And that really shows how um, people like Chinese Canadians were able to be tall despite suffering in these hardships. Okay, so as a child, I was captivated by a lot of popular media. So I immersed myself in lots of beloved shows and movies, such as Pokemon and Kung Fu Panda. And these stories instilled a deep appreciation for the symbolism and depiction of the Ukrainian media as a messenger of significance of one's journey. So I was really inspired by the widespread representation of the Ukraine, and I believe that it echoes the resilience of the journey of the Chinese immigrants who have braved countless obstacles to secure a better future for both themselves and their families. So one of the more obvious aspects in my design would definitely be the giant crane in the middle of the piece. So to me, a crane is an embodiment of resilience, having emerged victorious over numerous challenges throughout its storied history. So I did some research and I learned that whooping cranes have been slowly rebounding from near extinction. And their resistance against extinction is widely regarded as resilience. And the symbolism and depiction of the crane in media as a messenger and also the significance of one's journey is also what prompted me to include the crane in my design. And it, a crane may also symbolize immortality and wisdom. And I believe that these traits tie into the Chinese Exclusion Act because although we have adopted new policies and laws, the harm inflicted on the Chinese community continues to reemerge um, in multiple forms such as um, prejudiced opinions, generational trauma, discrimination, racism, microaggressions. So as we grow from our experiences, our determination and wisdom identically progresses as well, which demonstrates resilience in our communities. I also included plum, blos um, plum blossoms. So these flowers serve as a symbol of resilience and perseverance in the face of adverse adversity. So as plum blossoms often bloom most vibrantly, even amidst the harsh winter weather, this, this demonstration of resilience and resistance against challenging obstacles uh, represents resilience, which is why I included that in my work. Additionally, elements such as helix and spirals are a demonstration of resilience in nature, which is also why I included that in my design. So storytelling is a fundamental core in Chinese communities, and I believe that it is through these tales um, passed down that the legacy and history of our ancestors live on. And their journeys are a testament to their perseverance and that their experience also serve as um, a valuable reminder that resilience is the key to overcoming life's challenges. And so we tell their stories through our art in which we continue their legacy for the next generation. So as a proud intersection between both worlds of Chinese and Canadian, I strongly admire um, the Chinese immigrants' hardships, determination, and resilience in Canada in which the Chinese Exclusion Act held a significant impact on. Even in modern day society where Chinese Canadians still experience instances of discrimination, we continue to demonstrate our ongoing resilience. As we mark 100 years since the Chinese Exclusion Act, the powerful artworks created by students shed light on the challenges faced by the Chinese community. Through their creativity, these artists were able to connect the past and present, and the message of each art piece serves as a reminder to strive for a more inclusive future. Thank you for watching. Uh, for my artwork, my main focus was a phoenix because phoenix says they like reincarnate from their own ashes to start a new beginning. And uh, around the artwork, there's like uh, borders inspired by Chinese ancient, ancient Chinese uh, windows to represent their history. 
So while doing research, I came across the story of George E, who was an immigrant that came to Canada during the Chinese Immigration Act. And he, he took like seven years to pay off his um, like head tax working on a farm. But eventually she overcame those difficulties and like had his own farm. So as you can see in my piece, it was like a farmer or like a hand, like a hand passing a, a piece of grain off the child. And that to me represents older generations of immigrants, making it easier for future generations of immigrants and minorities in Canada.